You know, I probably should have done this when the Beards vs. Galaxia death battle showed up, but I think I was either too lazy or too incompetent to actually do it. Probably because I was too busy focusing on either making the Save a Moon video and blasting the music up to 11 because I'm dog at editing after coming back from 4 plus years of hiatus, or contemplating exactly how much I want to get bullied for doing Black Clover scaling and potentially getting everything wrong. Anyways, with the new Sailor Moon movie coming out, I decided to grind to get this video out as soon as possible, not only because the dedicated Sailor Galaxia video would be considered, quote, poggers, as the kids would put it, but also because Crystal does have somewhat of his own continuity while still being an adaptation of the manga. That, and I really wanted to make a video on Carcaptor Sakura, but apparently the series just isn't finished yet. I don't know what you could possibly do to make that series not finished, but apparently it's just not finished, and I really want to make a video on it. So if you couldn't tell, this would be based on the manga variant of Galaxia, not the 90s anime Galaxia. I legitimately could not be paid enough to sit through the OG anime again. So spoilers for the entire manga of Sailor Moon, as well as Crystal, Eternal, and the new movie. And with that out of the way, enjoy however many minutes of me talking about why Sailor Galaxia is kind of crap. Within the final arc of Sailor Moon, we meet Usagi's strongest enemy, the Sailor of Destruction, Sailor Galaxia, someone whose very presence is vastly different to anyone else Usagi had faced before. Taking down each of the Senshi in just one shot, Galaxia is considered to be one of the strongest in the universe, rivaling Eternal Sailor Moon, someone who had just defeated Queen Nehalenia of the Dead Moon Circus. With Nehalenia being a foe that was able to turn the entire magical plane of Elysium to ruins, as well as being able to control multiple different parallel mirror universes that even even Sailor Chibi Moon and Sailor Saturn, arguably two of the strongest Senshi aside from Moon, but that's a debate in and of itself, couldn't break out of. Not only that, but even Sailor Pluto in the 30th century believed that Galaxia's power was so dangerous that Neo Queen Serenity, you know, the Sailor Moon with Queen powers that was able to restore the entire planet by raising her staff after getting access to all of her silver crystal powers, as well as lighting up the entire universe with her image when she got married, couldn't walk through the space-time corridor safely. The space-time corridor is a realm that encompasses all of space-time, being considered so vast that Pluto states that distance and direction basically mean nothing and that without a space-time key you would be lost to the void. And Galaxia's power was considered to be a maelstrom of energy that was rampaging throughout the corridor just by existing. Unlike with Wiseman turning Chibiusa into Black Lady, which caused a storm that Pluto still walked through with a weaker version of each of the Senshi in order to find Tuxedo Mask. Not only that, but when Usagi was confronted by Galaxia and Juban, not only was Galaxia in base practically erasing Juban just by standing there, but she was also able to destroy the Holy Grail, an artifact that contained all the powers of all the Senshi that allowed Sailor Moon to transform into Eternal. That and Usagi had just blatantly stated that Galaxia was the strongest enemy that she had ever faced. So what makes Galaxia such a formidable adversary? That answer lies in her Sapphire Crystal, a crystal near identical to Sailor Moon's Silver Crystal. For those who remember, the Silver Crystal is the main source of Sailor Moon's power, being stated multiple upon multiple times to have infinite power. Not only is it able to give Sailor Moon amps equivalent to that of the Holy Girl by itself, as shown when she is able to transform into Super Sailor Moon at the start of the Dead Moon arc after losing her ability to transform, but it is also able to give her an amp strong enough to one-shot 8 Sailor animates just by pure resolve, each of which being the other 8 that all got Galaxia's power and were able to damage Eternal Sailor Moon to the point where she lost her wings. For reference, Sailor Venus, who's supposed to be the strongest of the inner Senshi, compared Eternal Strong's attack at the time to a breeze after blocking it with one hand, when a previous version of Venus in that same arc was barely able to defeat an animate with the help of Mars before Eternal obliterated it. As a frame of reference for those who don't know Sailor Moon scaling, the difference between Inner Senshi and Outer Senshi is insane. As the Outer Senshi are stated and shown, as well as implied, multiple times throughout the series to be stronger than the Inner Senshi, as each individual Outer Senshi can fold all of the Inner Senshi at once. 
which is not only backed up by narrative as well as feats, but also the fact that the inner senshi themselves said that they rely too much on them, and that they need to grow to be as strong as them. Not only that, but the three mainline outer senshi, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto were all considered to be stronger than the inner senshi by the queen herself. So much so to the point that at the time they were out of the story, they were stationed to protect Earth from threats that threatened entire solar systems and galaxies. And despite how powerful all three of them were, all of them got one shot by Saturn upon Saturn's reawakening from the talismans, which made them so scared that throughout the Deathbusters arcs, their entire goal was to not use the talismans. Since they believed that no one would be a match to stop Saturn aside from Super Sailor Moon, which Saturn also confirms. So for reference, Venus was struggling against, say, a planet buster while these other outer senshi were dealing with threats that could not only bust the solar system, but also galaxies as well. So this Venus, who has four other characters above her on this pyramid, makes this Galaxia amp seem pretty absurd, and Galaxia is just blatantly above all those amps in power. As against that same Sailor Moon, who is now filled with determination to beat her, being another amp to Sailor Moon, as we know that the Silver Crystal grows stronger based on her willpower, with Galaxia being on par, if not on top of the fight most of the time before Chaos actually intervened. I've already went over this before, but Sailor Moon characters are just fast for absolutely no reason. Like, it's actually absurd. For those who sat through that train wreck of a return video, you would remember that Eternal Sailor Moon, at a base casual flying speed, was able to reach the center of the galaxy to shadow Galactica from Earth within a short period of time while even making stops to Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto along the way. And while you could most likely say, Well, she made stops, so it's indefinable how much time it was. Sailor Chibi Moon and the Sailor Quartet were able to intercept an attack from an anime mid-attack on Sailor Moon while she was all the way on Earth while getting out of the space-time corridor, all within seconds. This feat is also coming from a character that's supposed to be one of the most inexperienced senshi and only really shows feats alongside Sailor Moon. Not only that, but it's also consistent with Saturn zooming all the the way to Charon Castle on Pluto while Sailor Pluto was being attacked after sensing she was being attacked literally mid-attack from Galaxia while in the sandpit chilling with Chibi Chibi and Chibi Usa not even in her senshi form. For some reason these characters are just casually spanning solar systems and galaxies worth of distance with no reasoning aside from yeah, they can, I guess. As for Galaxia, Galaxia blocked attacks from Eternal Sailor Moon from point blank range, whose Silver Crystal was able to shine a light throughout the space time corridor and was not only seen by Tuxedo Mask, who was wandering aimlessly throughout the corridor and also knew that it was Usagi, but also Wiseman, a man who stated he could see the light of the Silver Crystal in his palace that existed outside of space time while nerfed on Nemesis. And she was not only able to parry, but also dodge attacks from a more powerful Sailor Moon from that one on Nemesis that had gotten two amps over the story, each monumentally increasing her speed as well as her strength. Galaxia was also able to tag this amped Eternal Sailor Moon on multiple occasions, as well as being able to casually hit Senshi with her attacks all the way on Shadow Galactica with pinpoint accuracy. All of this immediately after her Sailor anime mates fail. She's also able to speed blitz Usagi earlier in the arc when taking Mamoru's Star Seed, not even giving her a chance to react and only to faint after he disappears. I don't even know what to say here anymore more, Sailor Moon speed just hits different. In the Sailor Moon video, I never really went into any hacks that Sailor Moon had, mainly because not only was I <clears throat> dog at this, but I also couldn't see any hacks that the Senshi inherently had that I would have considered as hacks. After all, you wouldn't really call superhuman strength or flying hacks, as so many other verses have these things that's just so commonplace that it phased out of the hacks dictionary, like lightning based attacks or fire based attacks. Sure, they are hacks, however, you wouldn't necessarily think of them on par with something like, say, a Genjutsu. Like, I wouldn't put Tsukuyomi in the same building as making mist appear, but that's just me. That being said, I severely understated the hacks of the senshi as a whole, like Mercury being able to perform dousing inherently, and Saturn having reign over the concept of destruction. But that's a video for another time. For example, Galaxia can't die unless her star sea is destroyed, as well as being able to go into other people's dreams and, you know, attack them. While also being able to breathe in a place where there is no oxygen, you know, 
like space, but that's not what you're here for. Galaxia doesn't have that many more hacks over the other Senshi, but her main hacks is her Star Seed attacks. While she does have attack potency that's enough to rival Eternal Sailor Moons, her main attack consists of attacking their opponent's Star Seeds. Due to her Galactica bracelets, she can completely eviscerate characters like practically every other character in the verse aside from Sailor Moon and Chaos by attacking their Star Seeds, completely bypassing durability and just erasing them off the face of the planet, and that's just the surface of it. With those Star Seeds, she can bring back the forms of those she had killed, only a stronger versions with Galactica bracelets, each of them only following allegiance to Galaxia, with each of these Senshi that were reborn receiving eternal level increases in strength with the Galactica bracelets. Shown when Sailor Serian Aluminum was able to completely overpower Sailors Mercury and Jupiter without effort after they had gotten eternal amps from the Dead Moon arc. Now, I do have to preface that the fundamental way that Galaxia takes Starseeds is different in the manga than it is from the original anime. When someone's Starseed is taken in the anime, usually those Starseeds appear out of the opponent's body before they fade away, giving them some time to perform plot mechanics like taking back their Starseed or something like that. However, in the manga, there is none of that. Whenever she steals star seeds, the person she steals it from just gets eviscerated and turns into dust instantaneously. But this can be circumvented by being just as strong as her, as Sailor Moon was able to parry attacks centered towards her star seed. She also has her sapphire crystal, which as we have stated previously, rivals the silver crystal in power, giving her unlimited power to work with, as well as being stated multiple times to only be matched by the silver crystal by not just Galaxia herself, but Sailor Chaos, the ultimate evil in the verse whose only rival in power was to Sailor Cosmos. But aside from that, she has all the standard Senshi hacks, like Regeneration and Reincarnation via Lambda, among other things like Flight, her attacks inherently being magic by nature, etc. She also has some level of clairvoyance, being able to hear and see events on Earth while spending all of her time on Shadow Galactica. Which makes sense considering every time one of her animates died, she just came in and just... Got him. And that's why Galaxia Soul is your favorite verse. I hope you all enjoyed my TED talk. I especially enjoyed the part where I said something along the lines of, Haha, <laughs> Star Seeker, brrrr. I might redo the Sailor Moon video at some point considering how horribly yet shockingly well it went because there was a lot of stuff I hated, some stuff I missed, and the amount of things I wanted to redo in it. But we'll have to save that for another time. I'm sure the next video will be more Magical Girl Scaling since Magical Girl Scaling is all types of whack. However, for the following character, I do not know. Though, it more than likely will be Sakura, assuming clear card does end in a timely manner. And don't worry, we'll get to Madoka later. We certainly will get to Madoka later. Anyways, by the time this video is out, it's most likely Christmas, which means that, you know, it's Christmas. Go spend time with your family, you know, do that thing. But that does also mean it is near the start of a new year. With that new year, I do want to start making more frequent videos, though it won't be as frequent as say once a month, but they will still be around the same amount of time as they usually do, just not put off as frequently as something like this. I do truly appreciate each and every one of you who do stick around and watch through these videos to the very end. I really do just like talking about things and just making sure that all of this stuff does get out there in some way, shape, or form to the random person who just doesn't know about it. So even though I really only really have a view goal rather than a like goal or any sort of dislike goal or anything like that, it's just really nice knowing that at least one person watches it. And if one person watches it, then that's enough for me. Anyways, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And if you didn't enjoy the video for some ungodly reason, give me one of the fattest dislikes in all of history in all of 2022 and flame me in the comments saying why you hate me. And as always, ciao. Mm-hmm.